I would like to extend everything that we talked so far in stress transformation into strain transformation. Um, let me quickly review what are strains. In two-dimensional cases, we had three strains. Strain in the x direction is the change in the length divided by the original length. Strain in the y direction would be defined similarly. Deformation in the y direction divided by the original length in the y direction. These two are normal strains, and there would be a shear strain, which is like this. Shear strain is the change in the angle, okay? And if I combine them all together, that would be the general state of strain in the element. Good news about the strain transformation is everything that I talked about stress transformation so far can be used for strain transformation. You don't need to use any new equation. Everything would be the same. Let me show it here. There is just one small difference. I will highlight it here. This is for a strain transformation in n direction. Compare that with stress transformation in n direction. That is exactly the same. Instead of sigma here, I'm using epsilon. That's it. The only difference between these two equations is this one. Instead of tau xy, instead of shear stress, I will use gamma xy over 2, half of shear strain. And this difference is repeated in all equations that you would see over here. This equation shows the shear strain transformation, and that is similar to the, to the shear stress equation that we had before. Here, this equation gives me the plane at which the maximum uh, normal stress occurs, the theta p, and this equation gives me the maximum normal strains or principal strains. Here is centroid plus and minus radius, so you can use the same more circle as we learned so far. And here gives me the maximum shear strain. The problem that I will solve is similar to what I have solved so far. Instead of using sigma, I'm using epsilon. And instead of using tau, I'm using half of gamma. All right. Let me quickly solve this problem. The strain component at a point a body subjected to plane strain R, epsilon x equal to negative 680 micro epsilon, epsilon y equal to 320 micro epsilon, and gamma xy equal to negative 980 micro epsilon. Um, the deflected shape of an element is subjected to this strain is shown in this figure. The question asks, determine the principal strains the maximum in-plane shear strain, and the absolute maximum shear strain. Epsilon x is negative 680, epsilon y is positive 320, and gamma xy is negative 980. I just need to plug that into these equations and determine the principal strains. I will plug that into this equation on the bottom. I just plug the values, and I should highlight that we need to work with half of gamma, as we discussed. And if I plug the values, that gives me epsilon P1 equal to 520 and epsilon P2 equal to negative 880. All right? The tangent of theta in this case would be gamma xy divided by the difference between the strains. And if I solve that, that gives me theta P equal to 22.21 degree. Similarly, I can determine the maximum shear strain in this case, the maximum absolute values and the maximum in-plane shear strains are equal to each other or they are different? They are equal to each other. Why? Because look at the principles. They have opposite signs. So maximum in-plane is equal to the maximum absolute. And that would be equal to the radius of the circle. So radius is this one. Uh, I plug the values into this equation. That gives me 700. Remember, 700 is half of gamma max. I multiply that by 2 to get gamma max equal to 1400. Here is the rotated element at which we expect seeing the principal strains. So I need to rotate this element by the angle of 22.21. Strain in the n direction would be 880, negative. Strain in the y direction would be 520, positive. I'm going to ask you a quick question. And I will give you, say, five minutes to answer that. Again, that is super easy problem. Consider this case. I think this is, a qu this is one question that I asked uh, in one final exam. Maybe I'm not sure. 
So consider this case. Strain in the x direction is uh, 1350, in the y direction is negative 674, and the gamma x1 is 1160 microradian. Determine strain in the n direction, 